Well, if I stabilize this data dynamics, I get stability for the entire system, right? This is what I am aiming for. So I want something like if the origin, let's give them names, like this is 2A and 2B, for example. If the origin of, if the origin is an asymptotically stable equilibrium point, right? equilibrium point of 2A if I ensure stability for the first guy I hope to get stability for the entire system the origin is a synthetically stable equilibrium of the entire system right which uh, in formal language we call it the interconnection interconnection or interconnected system by which we mean both 2A and 2B okay so what is the condition that if we add to the stability of the first guy to get stability for the entire system, well it's very you know expected that if it's stable and so on. If the origin is an asymptotically stable equilibrium of eta dot equals f naught of eta and zero. If you substitute zeta is zero here and this is stable and its own then you got to conclude the stability for the entire system. And this is what we call the zero dynamics. So we need the zero dynamics to be stable so that it's stable on its own, so that the entire system will be stable. Okay? So let's have a summary here. Let's have a summary. So we have x dot is f of x plus g of x times u. Now we have an output function. I have to specify an output function, and you need to tell me that it has a relative degree. Otherwise, we don't do, we can't do anything. So the relative degree is r. And like I said, we're looking for a transformation z equals t of x and feedback alpha plus beta v. So the x's will be transformed to epsis and phi's such that in the transformed system, epsi has a completely linear dynamics plus b v. Possibly with zero eigenvalues, that's okay, you can adjust them with v. And phi, the remaining dynamics is whatever is left over. Okay, how can you construct the size? That's very easy. So from x is I construct the size by epsi one is my y, epsi two is my y dot. Yeah, the other epsi r is the r minus one derivatives. So uh, with the control law star, that u is negative l f r h plus v divided by l g l f r h. And you're dividing by something, you should ask yourself why it's non zero because this is the definition of a relative degree. So, this control law in particular will ensure that this epsilon r dot is just b, right? So, I'm done with the epsilon, what about the phi's? So, we should construct n minus r independent phi's such that each phi is actually linearly independent of all the epsis, right? And LG phi is zero, okay? So now we can construct them. Are you sure that you will be able to construct them? Yes. Why? I will not discuss it here, but uh, I will tell you that this distribution <laughs> It has only one vector field. Do you think it's involutive? Is it involutive? Yeah, because the derivative of itself is zero, which is contained in the span. So this guy is involutive. It's one dimensional. So uh, it has a one dimensional surface, right? Which is defined by how many equations in the n 
n minus 1 equations. So n minus 1 functions such that Lg, these functions, is 0. Okay? So uh, you have here, by definition, Lg, these guys, are zeros. So phi's must be the rest. I will not discuss it further. If you, you can try to convince yourself based on this hint. If not, you can come to my office and we discuss it. This is this is a lemma by itself. And if these guys are all independent, this uh, defines a legitimate transformation because if size and phi's are all independent, and now we have a diffeomorphism. I give you the we're looking for epsize and phi's and feedback. I give you the size. Here is how we construct the size. Here is how we construct the phi's. And here is the feedback control law that we called star. Okay? The only remaining thing that we just showed is that we need to check right, that the zero dynamics, the zero dynamics, we can just do this and go home. The zero dynamics, which is the phi dynamics, just for the sake of to make it consistent with the rest of the lecture, this order is inverse deal. So this is phi, this is epsilon. So the zero dynamics, which is at zero epsilon, must be stable and so on, must be stable. Okay? Any questions so far? Constructor epsilon, constructor phi, get the phi dynamics, set epsi equal zero and check if it's stable or not. The easiest check is if it's linear, you know, eigenvalues, if it's not linear, linearize. That's okay. Okay? And actually in the system, if the zero dynamics is stable, we have a name, we have a definition for this system. The system is called minimum phase system. Minimum phase system. So a non-minimum phase system would be a system such that the zero dynamics is unstable. Okay? So this is a minimum phase system. Any questions so far? We will try to get an example, but uh, not now, next time, in the first 10 minutes or so. But I'd like to talk about minimum phase systems first. Any question up to this point? Any questions, please? Did you hear the word minimum phase or non-minimum phase before? Under that control. Uh, number Non-minimum phase system is a, is a system that is not a minimum phase, right? It's the opposite, so the, the zero dynamics are unstable. Okay, we, we don't talk about uh, zero dynamics in, in undergrad, but we definitely talk about non-minimum phase system. These systems are systems whose zeros, the zeros of the transfer functions, are in the sum of zeros, or in the right half plane, unstable zeros, in, in some, if we can say that, okay? You know that the zeros does not affect stability but they affect the performance. If you have one of the zeros in the right half plane, the system is stable, but the performance will be affected. How? So what is the physical meaning of non-minimum phase systems? Typically, if you have two competing uh, mechanisms in your system, it will result in a non-minimum phase system. Why? Because actually, so this is, let, let's say I have any system and I give it, this is time, this is output, and I give the step in. So uh, this is the guess, the thing. The minimum phase system will go like that, okay? Or whatever, it doesn't matter, maybe second order, right? The non minimum phase system will go down first. So this is a sign of competing mechanisms in your system. If you have two physics that are competing with each other, so one will win at the beginning, but then the other one at some point will just go up. Uh, in flight dynamics, the transfer function from the throttle to the speed of the airplane is typically non minimum phase. So if you increase your throttle without doing anything, the airplane speed will decrease first, which is very interesting. And then it will increase. Why? Because when you increase the throttle, the airplane will just actually go up. Going up, your speed will decrease because you have to wait with the drag now. So the speed will decrease, but then of course it will increase later on. Okay? So anyway, this is just a 
glimpse about the many of the systems which typically we see in our undergraduate linear control. Any question about that? Again, the concept carries over. Actually, we will show now that this concept, which is zeros in the right half plane, is exactly this. That the zero dynamics is unstable. So uh, let's see first what about the unobservability thing. Would we, why, why we get the unobservability? Who uh, took the 270A this quarter? Nobody took 270A. Uh, sure. It's not an excellent idea to take geometric nonlinear control before linear control. But uh, let's see. You have your linear system, x dot. So for linear system, We have x dot is ax plus bu, that's okay, and y is cx. Please pay attention here. And this system has a relative degree r. So uh, we know that because it has a relative degree r, that the dr y by dt. R, which is C A R X plus C A R minus one B. We know that this guy is not zero. In particular, this is the BM, the highest coefficient in the numerator of the transfer function, as we showed above. This is not zero. This is by definition of relative degree. And now our control uh, law stored. 